last class we started looking at bank gap references so we kind of stopped halfway during the derivation of something so first what we did is we we thought we could uh, try to derive it as the linear combination of two voltages right obviously one voltage has to have a positive temperature coefficient the other voltage has to have a negative temperature coefficient okay and we started off looking at the base emitter junction of a bipolar uh, transistor or a diode as the case may be because that's very well behaved it's exponential you know the characteristics are quite uh, uh, you know there uh, you know the dependence on temperature for example right in terms of the mobility in terms of vt and so on okay so we looked at the different uh, uh, dependences on temperature so the saturation current itself depends on mobility uh, temperature and the intrinsic carrier and we found out each one has a specific temperature coefficient we found out the overall temperature coefficient of is itself which had t power 4 plus m uh, a term which was t power, uh, t power 4 plus m and an exponential e power minus eg by kt so then what we did we found out dou vb by dou t in terms of the variation uh, temperature coefficient of vt and the temperature coefficient of is for now we will neglect the temperature coefficient of ic what we'll do is we'll of the collector current itself we'll go through this process assume it's constant we'll go through this process find out what it really is and then try to fit it back inside okay so we started deriving dou is by dou t it ended up being this this particular parameter okay so now we'll continue where we left off the other portion we need so we have dou is by dou t we need we know dou vt by dou t we just need to find out vt over is so we'll find out this term what is this i'm just going to multiply this by vt over is right so you'll get a term 4 plus m vt over t and okay is that clear okay so that's the second term what is the first term the first term we want is this dou vt or dou t we already know right it's just k by q nothing else we'll write it in this form we'll write it still as vt over t because k by q is nothing but vt over t We'll write it like this. Okay, Vt ln IC over IS is nothing but VBE. You have 4 plus m Vt, and then EG over K, uh, you know KT times Vt. You can just write it as EG over Q. Okay. Okay. Now we actually know all of these parameters because you know VBE is approximately uh, let's say 0.75 at room temperature. Vt is 25.9 millivolts. EG, you know, it's 1.2. 1.12 electron volts right you can find out all of these at 300k you can find out what this value is it looks something like this I'm assuming VBE is around 0.75 volts. 
okay <laughs> so it gives you a negative temperature coefficient of minus 1.5 millivolts per kelvin at room temperature okay at room temperature is very important because note that the temperature coefficient itself is a function of temperature okay so in other words if you try when you try to cancel it there will always be some error okay because this is not just a simple function of temperature okay now suppose you want to get a positive temperature coefficient how do you get a positive temperature coefficient so the well known positive temperature coefficient is actually vt right vt is kt over q so it definitely has a positive temperature coefficient at room temperature and that's very simple to generate you can just do something like this Okay. What is the delta VBE? It's nothing but VT ln n in this case, right? If the two transistors are identical, right? Everybody sees that it is VT ln n, right? okay and of course this is a positive temperature coefficient right with a specific value at room temperature so now what we'll do is we'll start off you know cancelling the temperature coefficient at room temperature okay so let's first do that find out the conditions for that this is your band gap itself remember you are going to make it as alpha 1 bbe this is your negative temperature coefficient okay <coughs> first of all what is this so we don't know n but we def we can definitely find out what this is okay so and so this will give this itself will give you that is this is what is this dou vt by dou t right at room temperature this will give you approximately 0.087 millivolt per kelvin okay so now we need to find out some alpha 1 alpha 2 and n such that this condition is satisfied so let's start off by we'll say let let's set alpha 1 to 1 we are going to take vbe directly right we need to find out alpha 2 such that it has zero the overall combination has a zero temperature coefficient correct so this is your condition correct the first term has a let me add the units also so so there's no confusion correct you're just equating the positive and the negative temperature coefficients making sure the magnitudes are equal you will get a number of around 
ओके यस वीटी लॉन एन नो 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 योर डो वी बी बाई डो टी इज नथिंग बट के बाई क्यू लॉन एन विच इज पॉइंट जीरो एट सेवन लॉन एन राइट यू सी आई हैव अंडरलाइन ओनली द के बाई क्यू राइट सो के बाई क्यू इज पॉइंट जीरो एट सेवन सो वी टी डो वी बी बाई डो टी इज पॉइंट जीरो एट सेवन लॉन एन यू आर गोइंग टू मल्टीप्लाई दैट बाई अल्फा टू इक्वेटेड टू अल्फा वन टाइम्स वन पॉइंट फाइव एंड नाउ वी इवन अस्यूम अल्फा वन इज वन टू मेक थिंग्स ईजियर Okay, so now that you have found this out, you can find out the full expression for VBE again. Just substitute it back here. <laughs> so alpha one is one, so this just becomes VBE. What is the second portion? It's just seventeen point two VT. Okay. and at room temperature this happens to be approximately 1.25 volts okay so now we need to find out ways to actually generate a linear combination like this a vbe plus some function times vt right in other words some something times you know it's going to be something times some delta vbe actually okay Yes. <laughs> that okay? so let us take a look at this particular structure okay so what we are what we are trying to generate is vbe plus some something times delta vbe remember that okay why am i looking at this particular structure yes yeah previous page yeah of course so here i am actually equating the magnitudes right that's what i have done here yes vb i have assumed this 0.75 no 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 here i am i am equating the temperature coefficient okay so v ref equals alpha 1 vb plus alpha 2 vt ln n correct now if i take do by do t of both sides One side is zero. The other side, I have do VB alpha one times do VB by do T plus alpha two times do by do T of VT ln n. I know what that is. That is 0.087 ln n. Now I equate that to zero. I get this particular relationship. So the reason I am I have drawn this structure is because this is a good way of generating. something proportional to vt how do you make something proportional to vt we just looked at it we want a delta vbe right at the end of the day now if you force vo1 equal to vo2 in this particular structure what happens what is the voltage across r is the delta vbe you want if you can force vo1 equals vo2 the voltage across r is the delta vbe between q1 and q2 right so that's what we are going to do 
and of course the other important thing is we are going to neglect the base currents okay suppose you do this okay then we can find out vb1 we just write the relationship we know vo1 is vo2 okay in this case it's nothing but i not r is vt ln n what is vo2 vb2 plus i not r which is vb2 plus vt ln n correct this is actually exactly what we wanted originally from your bank gap you wanted a vb term you wanted something proportional to vt the only problem is here we don't have alpha 2 right that's the only difference apart from that vo2 directly gives you your bank gap reference you wanted but what is the value of n you need this is your condition you want vt plus 17.2 vt so ln n is 17.2 what does it lead to uh, what will it uh, give you for n it will give something crazily large right so this definitely won't work in its, in its present form we'll have to modify it such that we have some alpha 2 okay okay so there is one more problem how do you force vo1 to vo2 short them will it work if we short them if you short them you are basically shorting vo2 to be vb itself right vo2 is vb2 plus vt ln n that's the one you are trying to create v ref you don't want to make that equal to vb1 right exactly apply through an op amp right apply through an op amp and create a feedback circuit negative feedback circuit which would force vo1 to be equal to vo2 okay so we're going to do this okay call this x and i'll call this y okay we're going to create a circuit something like this which will actually solve both your problems because we also have one more problem where n is very large right so it turns out this particular circuit takes care of that problem also so i'll call this ic1 call this ic2 okay <laughs> i know that the feedback is working vx will be equal to vy right right i have this relationship also vb1 will be nothing but vb2 plus vt ln n okay what is ic2 
What is IC2? What is the voltage across R3? What is it? The voltage across R3. Yeah, what is that? No, what is that? I have written it here. It's VT ln n. Right? Okay. So, what is the current, what is IC2? Is VT ln n over R3. Right? Okay. What is VO? What is VO? Okay, so VO is VB2 plus IC2 times R2 plus R3. So now again, VO is the output voltage you wanted, that happens to be in the same form you wanted, you have a VBE and you have a VT, long, VT into something, now that VT into something has to be 17.2. This is what you want. No, this is more straightforward. Right? Because now you can make n quite small. A few tens maybe. Right? And 1 plus R2 by R3 can also be a few, you know, anywhere from 1 to 10 or something. You will get reasonable values of n. Okay? So this, this circuit gives you reasonable values of n. Okay. <clears throat> now let's go back. What was, uh, what was IC2? Vt over R3 ln n. Right? Is it a function of temperature? It is. And in fact, it happens to be proportional to temperature. Okay. So now let's go back and calculate the real dou VB by dou T. So this is the this is the term we had yesterday. And now you'll have one more term. Right? Where you'll have taken into account IC variation also. What we'll do is, for simplicity, we'll also assume that R1 and R2 are equal, so that IC1 is approximately equal to IC2. Okay? Both of them have V out on the same side, Vx equals Vy. So we'll assume R1 equals R2, so that IC1 equals IC2. So this is the first term we had before. Right? This is the overall term, overall expression. Now this also tells us dou I C by dou T.
Is this K by Q? I have just written it as Vt over T. Yes. R3. Now, yes, you are right. We are assuming right now that R3 is relatively independent of temperature. Okay. Now, that is again a second level error you need to take care of. Okay. So, every error you take care of, you will have to iterate. Now, it so happens that the collector current variation is a most straightforward variation of temperature. If you know R3 variation also, you will have to include that in this. Okay. And you will have to see how it changes dou Vb by dou T. Okay. So, everything which affects it. In fact, there are a number of things which we are, uh, you know, simplified. Okay. For example, of course, we want to consider what happens that you will have to reduce the curvature. Right. There are ways to reduce the curvature of the band gap. So, more uh, sophisticated methods. We just want to look at the very basic idea. Okay. But definitely it's a good point you brought out that R3 is also a function of temperature. We are assuming you are using a resistor which has a small, uh, small uh, you know, temperature coefficient, which may or may not be true. I'll write it as IC over T, your uh, do, uh, do IC by do T. Okay. What did we have earlier? I'm going to go back. Sorry. This is what I had. What is going to happen now? <coughs> if I include IC variation, what is going to happen? My earlier when I didn't include IC variation, I had VBE, dou VB by dou T was nothing but VBE minus 4 plus MVT minus EG over Q, everything over T. Now if I include dou IC by dou T, which is nothing but IC, I mean, which happens to be uh, IC over T, that times Vt happens, to, uh, Vt over Ic happens to be Vt over T. What is it? Exactly. So it now becomes 3 plus m instead of 4 plus m. Everybody sees that? This is the extra term you have. Vt over T and it has a positive coefficient. Here you had minus 4 plus m Vt over T. Now it becomes minus 3 plus m Vt over T. <coughs> okay. Okay, so now dou Vb by dou T becomes slightly different expression. You can evaluate this at room temperature and it will be slightly less than minus 1.5 millivolt per Kelvin. Okay. <coughs> so, what this means is, now you will have to go back and redesign your that 17.2 coefficient. It will have to be slightly different, but that is not a, that's not a major problem, right? That is not a very big problem. Okay, so it requires some iteration. Okay, so what is does this need? Suppose you want to implement this in CMOS. What is the problem? Of course, you don't have NPN in CMOS process. Okay, what you have are actually PNPs.
okay you can easily create a pnp which looks like this in a cmos process you are using pretty much the same things which you would use you are creating an extra diffusion contact for the collector very straight forward you always you, you do that regularly in an nl which looks like a pmos you are basically taking a p plus using it as the emitter the base is just the nl connection that is the right so now you have a pnp transistor obviously with one caveat what is that you know that the sub p sub p subset is always connected to the lowest potential which is ground in this case okay so you have a, P, a, a, a vertical pnp transistor which whose collector is always connected to ground okay how do you do it you can have a double well exactly so double well is not a common thing single well is common double well is not common at all i thought i mentioned this in class so the most common is p substrate with an n well or in, you can also have an n, n substrate with a p well a double well would mean an extra mask and not just single you need several extra steps processing steps several that means several extra masks the cost of the process increases okay there may be specialized processes where you can request that at extra cost but nobody wants to do that okay okay so how do you modify your circuit <laughs> how do you modify your circuit to include pnps any ideas what is it if you flip the whole thing will it work actually can you do it remember that the collector of the pnp is grounded if you flip the whole thing you want the collector right that won't work what are you interested here in these two places you are interested in creating a vbe right so then you don't have to you can just replace these two with something like this so let me copy this guy again can you do this of course you can right so that you'll get one vb at sorry one vb at this point the second vb at this point all you have to do is ground the bases okay i'll do let me try to do a better job of drawing this okay so pretty straight forward you can go ahead and implement this uh, pnp inside the uh, thing so it looks fine okay what are the problems can you think of how about the op amp first of all what are the signs of the op amp Huh? Minus on the top and plus at the bottom. Why? So you are saying it's this. Why? Uh huh. That's right. Everybody sees that. in this case you are actually giving both positive and negative feedback i mean you are giving feedback to both the terminals right so the terminal which goes the path which has more feedback should go to the negative terminal that's what you have to make sure okay 
Is that clear? Okay. <coughs> what else? Signs of the op amp. What else? Anything else related to the op amp? You can think of which could cause trouble. Current. It will draw current, okay. So how much current will it draw? It depends on R3 and VT ln M. Right? You can try to make sure that, I mean, that means that you will need to have a larger current op amp. But or you can change R3, R2, R3, R1 to make sure it doesn't draw a lot of current. Okay. But yeah, so that is definitely a, an issue here with the fact that it draws current. Okay, so we will finally look at a structure which doesn't draw current. But this one does. Anything else? What other characteristic of the op amp could cause trouble here? What all have we studied about the op amp? What all? Stability. Okay, so you have to make sure it's, yeah, sure, right? Negative feedback needs to be larger than positive feedback. You need to take care of if, uh, you know, do you, sorry? Okay, gain is not large enough. You may not have Vx equals Vy. So that thing could have a slight error. Okay, so that is one problem. Anything else? Yes, offset. Right, we are trying to create a DC voltage here. Right. So the most important problem you could think of is probably offset. So let us say I add, I add some offset voltage here at the input of the op amp. Okay. How will it change your design? Now you need to include VOS in all your equation. Right? Is nothing but VBE2 plus. Oh, sorry, by, uh, I'll just call it, uh, I'll just call it IC2R, it's the same as VT ln N, okay? So now you can go ahead and calculate this, right, to find out VO. Oh, sorry, VB2. Correct? <coughs> Is that correct? Right, so not only do you just have the offset, the offset is actually getting multiplied up by this 1 plus R2 over R3 term. Right? So it's definitely a big problem. Now one assumption we have made here, actually when calculating this, is that we have assumed that IC1 is still equal to IC2, even in the presence of offset. That may not be true, right? Because Vx is no longer exactly equal to Vy, right? So that is another problem. What else? If I change temperature, does the offset stay constant or does it change? probably changes because it does depend on VT, right? It depends on number of factors which depend on VT, okay? So the offset voltage can also be a function of temperature. So you have several problems. So what do you, first of all, what do you do to reduce the offset?
What? Everything else being equal, what do you do to reduce offset? Offset voltage. Huh? Sorry? Sorry, I'm... Increase the... Increase the size, the area. Right? Remember it was proportional to 1 over WL times... Right? Something. Okay, so that is one thing you can do. So the other technique you can use is we'll just take a look at it. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to do two things. One is we are we are no longer going to have these two resistors equal. We are going to make one a ratio of the other. Okay, the other thing we are going to do is so that of course IC1 will become some ratio of IC2. Now. Okay. The other thing we'll do is, you see that this VOS is related to VT and VB2. So now we can also think of increasing these two quantities without affecting VOS. How do you do that? Well, instead of having a single PN junction, you can have two PN junctions in series. Right? That will give you two VB2 and that will give you two VT ln N. Okay. Yes. Actually, because at the end of the day, we want VBE. Right? <laughs> you want a well-connected <laughs> VBE. You are right. You can use the diode also. But in, the, in, the, in this particular case, the easiest transfer that is available is actually a... See, we actually start off with the diode. What is the bipolar transfer um, NPN with its collector connected to a base is actually a diode. Right? There is no difference. Right? We wanted to use PNPs. So, we added the PNP in a particular form. Now again, this PNP also has a problem because you can't connect the collector at a non. How do you take care of that? Think about what you want. What do you want? 2 VBE. How do you generate 2 VBE from a second PMOS? If you have 2 PMOSs, how do you generate 2 VBE? Okay, let's tackle one problem at a time. Okay, so let's come back here. We'll assume that we have generated 2 VBE. Find out what the new offset is. Okay, let's do this first. And NA, NA, that's right. Okay. Correct? So IC1 is now going to be? M times IC2. What is delta VBE now? Let us just say delta VBE of Q1 and Q3, let's say. It's the same. They both carry the same current. 
if you are finding out 2 delta VBE, difference between 2 delta VBE, that is the same as difference between delta VBE. What is that? What did we have earlier? Delta VBE equal to? VD ln M. What will you have now? Huh? Think about it. Calculate it. What is it? It's just VT ln IC over IC1 over IS1, right? Minus IC2 over IS2. What is that? VT ln NM, right? Okay. Earlier we had, of course, IC1 equals IC2, so we just had VT ln N. Now we, we have VT ln MN. Okay. What is VO now? <coughs> Can somebody calculate what VO is? It's VB3 plus VB4. Plus Okay. Can you calculate what this is? I want it in the same form as we had before. VT ln NM, okay. You don't have any VOS. And don't, shouldn't you have a 2 VT ln MN? Because now you are looking at 2 delta VB. Right? You should have a 2 VT ln MN. I'll give you the answer. Okay, this is what you wanted to do. You wanted 2 VBE, right? You got that. So your offset voltage as a function of the other terms is small. You wanted to ratio it that 1 plus R2 over R3, right? That you can, that is a constant uh, common term for VT and VOS. But now VT has an extra M term. You can ratio increase that also relative to VOS. Okay? Okay, so let's stop here. We'll continue tomorrow with this, okay, there are a couple of other simple changes you can do. For example, what you do with the, um, with the PNP, right? One of you guys pointed out about this connection, right? So we'll see what can be done about that, something to improve the performance of the band gap. Okay, but remember, at the end of the day, your band gap with temperature is going to look something like this. You are compensating maybe a 300K. With temperature, it has a certain curvature. You are going to try to use different techniques to, imp I mean, decrease the curvature and make it as flat as possible. Okay, that is a discussion which we may not have. Okay, in this class, this this will just teach you the basics. There are lots of techniques. Okay, to do that also. Today, five o'clock is the exam. <laughs>